And we're live now for some reason. It didn't go live. <laughs> so let's rewind. Um, cool. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure. <laughs> we're Forever May Fall. I'm Jill, aka Fox. I'm your singer. I'm Patrick. I play the bass. I am Adam, and I play the drums with Forever May Fall. So how would you like to describe your band? Um, I would say our energy first starting, like we were really angry. Um, there was a lot of unknowns. Um, our, our original guitar player, Jason, um, and all of us actually were transplants to North Carolina and we all met yeah. on Craigslist. All of, us. <laughs> all of us. All of us. Not one of us was a murderer. Yeah, yeah. We all, see, we're all here. Well, you know, honestly, you shouldn't have said that because Jason isn't sitting here. He's not a <laughs> but was, he's not here. You, know, you just looking, created possible. Just I was, kidding. I was on Craigslist <laughs> for more of my musical instruments. Yeah, oh, I yeah. I had made the post initially because um, so when I was on Long Island, I was in a band and out of the music industry for years. I was there for 22 years. Um, and then when I came down here, I was happy to give it up for a while and like not be known at all. But probably about five or six years in of like not having any friends, not being involved in music, I was like, man, I miss music. And I was like, I want a band. So I just went on Craigslist and first found Jason, our old guitar player, then found this guy over here straight from Philly, and then found this guy who has been all over the place. Did you come from Texas or did you come from Oklahoma? I came here from Texas, okay. originally from Oklahoma. Okay. So we were all just a bunch of like mishmash people and we were pretty angry at a bunch of different things that are <laughs> in our life at the yeah. time. Um, but going forward with our rebranding, so we've rebranded everything over the last year and a half. So all of the new stuff that we're planning um, to release has a much, um, I mean, there's still a little bit of an angry vibe, but it's just way more upbeat. It's not as dated. It's not as lengthy. Um, it's definitely a little bit more modern, that's for sure. Um, but you'll probably see a little bit more of an upbeat vibe, like something closer to the lines of better days instead of something as angry as like SOS or MOD. In fact, a, a redo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're, we're working on um, definitely a redo or a, a rewrite of better days. Um, and we'll probably, we'll probably take some time to modernize some of the older stuff that we'll continue to play as we go on. And this is gonna be a hard question for you. What do you wanna leave as your legacy? Um, just helping one person. I don't care who you are with what, if, if something that we have said, done or created helps anybody, then, I mean, that's what it was created for us to do. It was to help us get through the times. Um, it's always been a passion. It's helped us to express. So at least for me, um, I'm, I'm sure I can speak for all of us, but I know for me personally, if, it can help anybody with anything through a day, through a situation, through their life, then we've left our mark. Yeah, I agree. If, if, if anything else, I, I, I mean, we, we love talking to our fans before and after shows and, and such. And uh, also we're, I, I think we're all big advocates for the arts and such and in schools and, and just, just things like that. So, in addition to what what Fox mentioned, uh, I, I think if if we could maybe even just bring one person, uh, young, old, or otherwise, to the love of yeah. you know introducing them to learning to play music, um, yeah. something like that, that, I think that would also be a, a great win too. Who's your biggest influences? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, for me, I'm a little bit all over the place. Um, being a being a 90s baby, I've got everything from Stevie Nicks and Joan Jett, um, Celine Dion. There's a meme going around that's like, what female singer do you sing with like all your heart and soul? Like Celine yeah. Dion, like no doubt. Um, but I had that really cool era of the 2000s with all those powerful women too, like Lizzie Hale and Amy Lee and um, Haley Williams. Uh, there's there's so many of them out there female wise, just strong and powerful and doing the thing. So I'm kind of a little bit all over the place. 
Gotcha. I, I grew up uh, listening to classic rock, uh, metal and punk. And so my biggest influence is there. Geezer Butler, Black Sabbath, and then uh, Flea of Red Hot Chili Peppers, because you can't deny him. And I kind of merged th those two. I've had so many of their songbooks. Like back in the day, you couldn't just go online and there was a YouTube video. You actually had to buy, you know, music books. And I spent yeah. so much time on those two artists, well, bassists that, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, they're, they're great if they're listening. I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so I guess for me, a little mismatch of a, of a lot of things, but I, I, I think a lot of my, uh, what I've played before forever may fall was really rooted in a lot of, um, like Lamb of God type stuff. I'm a big fan of, of, uh, Chris Adler when he was with them. Uh, I, I am no Chris Adler caliber <laughs> drummer, but, um, stop selling yourself short. Uh, but uh, he, uh, wait, wait, well, uh, so a lot of metal, basically, I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I studied him a lot, a lot of that sort of sort of technique. Um, but yes, yes. <laughs> he said you have his snare drum. Yes, yes, I do. I do have a snare drum. Uh, uh, Joey Jordison is what, what she was saying. Uh, also, um, rest in peace, man. Yeah. Um, uh, so a lot, a lot of their stuff too. But yeah, 90s were uh, and late 80s were very formative for me. Uh, watching um, when MTV played music, watching your Van Halen and uh, all that sort of thing. So. Okay, so so that ties into the next question. Do you remember a celebrity death match? Oh my God, yes. Who would you want to be in the ring with? <laughs> oh God, this is awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, this is a good one. Who would I want to be in the ring with? Pepperidge Farms guy. <laughs> that would just be hilarious. Like him kicking my ass, that would be funny. Um man, I don't know. I'm like, do you know? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I really there's so many like I really can't think like but one that comes to mind only because I know the show and like the hilarity that ensues like I would pick Justin Bieber because I would want I would want the animators to have that like play that clip of baby baby every time he gets rocked in the face <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I can think of like hilariously um oh, there's so many I can think of though Michael Bolton. Oh <laughs> Michael Bolton. David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Oh my God, I love that show. I, I, I would. I would. That would be great, honestly. <laughs> I wish they would bring that back. What was your best moment on stage and your worst moment? <clears throat> He there looked at no, me. He no, knows exactly where I'm going. There was never a bad moment. Every time's on stage is fantastic. You know what, though? I'll be honest with you. I can't say that us, because we practice so much. Like, I can't say that we've ever had a moment that was like, oh, my God, this is so mind-bogglingly terrible. We need to pack it up and never do this again. Like, we've never had a moment mm -hmm. that bad. That's true. <laughs> our very first show though and uh poor Krabby is probably gonna dig his head into the sand right now um so before we upgraded all of our equipment and got a little bit more technical with some of the sound we didn't play with a click track or anything of the sort and we opened the set with our song home and it starts with just Krabby counting off a four count with his sticks before he starts playing and him and guitar come in together at the same time and it was just a mix of adrenaline and nerves and excitement that he sped the song up by like one and a half there was nothing <laughs> wrong with, with that timing that time now was i loved it no i will honest. say we played it off without a hitch like it went down but I was I, I was singing it that that song is at the top of my like belting range and is very wordy. So I was literally like <laughs> after every line and at any time I had like a break, I like turned around to him and just looked at the drums and I was like, make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that, is that your worst moment? I, yeah. 
Yeah, was was there another worst moment that I have? I, I, I got I've, I've not I've not fallen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm not sorry. fallen. I've not eaten shit. I've not fallen off the stage. I haven't forgotten any words. So I think, and honestly, that really like like if that's the worst moment we've had, that's like, not that's bad. Not bad. Not um, the best moment I will say was all of us in my opinion, at our Amos's show oh, in 2019, when all of us just had, when we closed, we, we closed with an unreleased song called Thought You Should Know. And at the very, very end of it, there was a spot where Krabby pauses, everyone pauses, and we all come back in together. And we just all happen to either jump or like you would even like come up off the throne yeah. for the, the, the snare in. And like, it was just unrehearsed and just Perfect. That's that, that picture we have. That's the picture we have as a cover photo, yeah. That's, a, that's what that picture is. Yeah. Yep. Do you guys have any other moments? That, that was, that, that is, for a best moment, it, that's, that was pretty moving. Um, Actually, I will say one of the worst moments I can think of when we played at the Milestone and the stage wasn't big enough and you had to stand in the fucking corner. <laughs> Nobody puts baby in the corner. <laughs> but no, it's, it, that was a small stage. It was a very it was, small stage. still rocked it. I think they've expanded it now. Haven't been there though. In a while. If you can pick your own bill, who do you want on it? Ooh. Live or dead. Oh, Live or dead. Just fan, fantasy bill. Yeah, mm -hmm. fantasy bill. Ooh. I I would love to share the stage with either Alanis Morissette or or Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Nicks, either on her own or, or with the band. Um the the music isn't particularly the same um but alanis man i mean she was like the voice of my 90s and i've had people tell me that the strength in my voice is somewhat similar to hers so alanis would be a good match to be that that's i would open for her any day for peanuts like just to be there like i just i'd show like she could tell me what to wear at that point <laughs> like i do it gotta go uh queen i would love I've never got to see freddie and i would love to see that dude mm -hmm. sing so i would love to play with queen uh yeah I'd, so i gotta echo that i was yeah. thinking that so so queen with original lineup um lamb of god original lineup i guess yes um, i'm gonna yeah. go to that show yeah i'll do it yeah there's 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 times why that's a two by four question man that's a good yeah. question I, I mean, I could also say Hailstorm too, because I mean, Lizzie's just awesome. I could never yeah, compete yeah. in those heels. Like, I've, I've I got, couldn't either. I'm good. <laughs> can, I, can I say a fun anecdote about Lamb of God? Yeah. I, I, I saw them play back before they got big, and they were playing at a VFW on a stage that was maybe six inches high, and I was front and center, and Randy was there with his shirt off, sweating wow. up a storm. It was the summertime. They kept on leaning into the crowd, and we kept on pushing them back, and he doesn't make uh, secrets of his mole very uh he doesn't doesn't keep secrets about it he's got a name for it i think and everything and yeah i touched that thing a couple of times that night putting him back on stage and so he doesn't know it but him and i are very close <laughs> <laughs> i hope he's watching yeah. <laughs> oh man so if you weren't in, in the music industry what would you be doing well, by day, um, I work in real estate. I do real estate law. I'm an operations manager and I manage five offices across the state. Um, so music is definitely an escape for me. Um, if I weren't in the music industry and I was working that job solely and that was all I was doing, my free time would probably be spent in the Met County Penitentiary. <laughs> Yeah, I've been in logistics for uh, close to 20 years, and I recently saw, I'm going, currently taking my CDL classes. I'm going to become an owner-operator truck driver. Nice. So he's going to drive the bus when we start going out on tour. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably, uh, I'd probably have a car detailing business. Uh, I... Really? Yeah, well, you, you know how I keep them. Well, yeah. I, I'm, I am obsessed with I just I, I I keep my stuff clean and I I I'm I'm definitely a DIYer but I'm I think I'm enthusiast level. Uh, I got a huge <laughs> huge bag of 
uh, products and such on the weekends in the summer and spring. I, I love uh, detailing my own vehicles. So. Interesting. I never would have pegged you for the car detailing, dude. <laughs> Do you want to come clean I'll my house? I'll back and take that. I'll pay like, you. We will have the cleanest tour bus or whatever. I bet so. Pick up those chips. <laughs> Who left the chips on the couch? He's got a pocket dust buster. <laughs> So what would so what would be your last meal? Ooh, my last meal. Um, so I I've recently gone vegan, and contrary to most people's belief, it would not be a freshly mowed lawn. Um, no. <laughs> no, it would not. Um. Being that I've, I've gone vegan, I haven't eaten meat. It's not to say that I, I gave it up um, by choice. I actually had a bunch of health issues that a plant-based diet was the best option for me. Um, so my last meal, I would probably take the heartburn, the worst acid reflux, and like probably eat a smoked turkey leg from the Ren Fair. Like, <laughs> or, or like a giant steak, because I just, I don't eat it anymore. I gotta go with a steak too, but one that's cooked very long. If it's the last meal, one that's cooked very long, like say fifty years or so, because I okay. want to keep living a little bit longer. Oh, know? so you want to chew it like a hockey puck for no, eternity? I just, oh, I just want to keep it. <laughs> it keeps me alive, man. Alive. <laughs> it's a miserable existence. <laughs> Jaw's gonna give out before <laughs> before your will to live. <laughs> Whichever comes first, I'll swallow the damn thing if I got to. For me, um, so so I was gonna say if with your previous question, if not a car detailing thing, pro probably like a barbecue restaurant, because um, I, I I love smoking meat. Uh, it's, <clears throat> nah. In the winter time, that's when I'm not. You like cold. smoking <laughs> meat? Oh, it's dude, cold. this yeah, this guy, yeah, good, like he, um, I I could see him opening a restaurant. Like you 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 particularly called this man if you were seeking the meat sweats. Uh, because if you follow Krabby on Instagram, <clears throat> when this man decides that it is a weekend to make some meats, then it's it's insane. First of all, the dedication, because my ass would not be up at one o'clock in the morning turning the damn thing on a smoker. Like, I no, I would just pay somebody <laughs> like him to do it. But he's in the well, well, the flavor is incredible. That's well, the one thing you. I do miss as a vegan. Well, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but last meal, I mean, all that stuff's great. Uh, you know, I love the steak and everything. But see, back in Oklahoma, we have this thing that's practically a food group called gravy. <laughs> gravy? And, yeah, and uh, it's it can be white cream gravy or brown gravy. So I think my last meal would have to be phrasing probably some. Some white, are watching. some white gravy with like, like just some fried chicken strips or a, a big, big chicken fried steak with gravy and some, just some comfort food like that. So I'd say some chicken and gravy. I mean, I could, I could see it. I mean, you, you and you and Stacy are incredible cooks, honestly. Like, usually, usually when you first meet people and they invite you to their house for food like you always have like that sort of trepidation like oh like i don't know these people that well like what do they eat how do they cook this is either going to yeah. be great or it's going to be awful and like the first time i ever went over like when we oh god we were only in the band together maybe like three or four months and they had come here for um friendsgiving we had a, our first like giant house show like right in this basement um and then I had gone there for either one of the holidays or something. I, like I walked out of there, I was like, "Holy shit, they are cooking for everything." <laughs> well, the ironic thing is that for the last year or so, even though I still do that, I went vegetarian. Yeah, you guys predominantly so, too. Yeah, so no, well, not, you went vegan. We vegetarian is all I can. Do. I need yeah. my baby. You know? Hey man, I gotta I gotta keep but, the uh, bod and the health. But like one, once in a while, out here. Once, once in a while, I still have still have some meat. Uh, I still still smoke a brisket, pork, whatever. Um, usually just give it away. 
the man wakes up in the middle of the night to check the temperature of his coals. He sets an alarm and has an app on his phone that lets him know what it's, what, what it's doing. Well, I use a old school offset stick burner. You know, okay. Right? Oh, he's, he's really I don't understand the magic. I just I'm there to eat it once it's done. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Not beautiful. only can he play a job. It's funny. He's got the best meat in the bar- industry. Barbecue, barbecue and gravy, I guess. <laughs> uh, so what kind of click were you guys in high school? <laughs> band nerd. I was I was one hundred and fifty percent band nerd. That's that's where I was, man. If anybody from high school is currently watching, please feel free to chime in because I myself am curious. Um I was the ugly goth chick that was friends with everybody. I had hair up to here and it was black. And I think at one point freshman year, I walked around with black angel wings and I was not ashamed of it, nor am I sorry. Uh, (laughs) But I I was, I didn't really have a click. Um, I definitely had a look about me, uh, but I got along with everybody. I, um, I got bullied. I was a bully. I was friends with the popular kids and the athletes. I played lacrosse for a little while. I was a musician. I was an artist. Um, My friend's mom, actually, one of my closest friends growing up, her mom used to call me the mayor because everywhere we went, like I said hi to somebody, I knew somebody. Um, So while the years sucked because it's high school, um, I never... I had, a, I had a look, but I never, like, belonged to one certain group of people. I had my share of fights, and I had my share of defending people. So it was an interesting time for me, for sure. Definitely didn't like myself. But. <laughs> well, we like you. Well, thanks. I was definitely the stoner skateboarder crew, and uh, kind of like Joe, I was not the mayor, but I was definitely uh, any anything to make people smile. I got class clown, so there you go. Sorry, Adam, if you're watching, um, I totally <laughs> was campaigning to win that. I know if it wasn't me, it needed to be you. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Well, I said I, a band, I band fired straight off. I was I was straight off. Off. <laughs> I, I had a lot of friends uh, everywhere too, but um, I was. I was uh, Poster child for fan nerds. <laughs> Did you have like the drum pad in your backpack and like you would start like hitting it when, when I, things were like I, slow I, or boring? I did, man. Lived in the practice room. Uh, I, I never admitted it, but I I really enjoyed getting fitted up for them polyester marching. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, yeah, let's, let's get that. Uh, were you in were you in were you in drum corps? No, I, I wanted to be at the time. I just but and I wanted to go uh, up to Madison uh, to audition for the, um, the the Blue Devils, I believe. I think they're up there. Um, and uh, I just at the time, I just I didn't get myself up there to do it. But I, that was definitely a desire I had. But no, I was, I was never in a court. So which one of you is the most calm one? The, the, the calm, calm, calm. Calm, like when shit hits the fan, yeah. like fully calm. When shit hits the fan, and who is the calmest? It's 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 boxer Pat. It's not. I don't know about that. One. See, I, mm, no, I don't know. I, it's I not think, Joe. I think well, I think yeah. I think externally, I can put on the appearance that I'm calm and I can handle business because professional, yes. professionally is what I do all day. Shit hits the yeah. fan. I fix it. I do damage control all the time. Um, internally, I'm like, ah! <laughs> like the, the noises can't be like it, it, anything you can think of. That that's probably what the noise is. Um, it takes a lot for me to actually be calm. So all of us in this band, um, including some of the potential new members that we're we're considering, um, we all have some sort of ailment, whether it be um, mental, physical, um, you know, I had general anxiety disorder mm-hmm. my entire life, cu- coupled with that comes depression. So with that comes the manic ability to just get things done all the time without feeling emotion and then complete the task and all of that emotion that you should have felt hits you in that moment and then for a week you're not getting out of bed. So I struggle with that. ADHD. Swedish struggles with ADHD. Adam. Well it it 
real, I don't know if it has any bearing on how I handle all our problems, but, uh, Does I, it have, yeah, but... I, I mean, I, I have, I have Tourette syndrome, uh, something I, I keep a good sense of humor about. <laughs> so if you happen to see my head jerk during this or whatever, I'm, I'm fine, <laughs> but, <laughs> so... I, but I do, I do have that. Um, but no, when it comes to stuff, I, I just, I don't think I'm the calmest it, I, externally. I might, I might look okay, but in my head, I am catastrophizing. I'm going to all the worst cases. Yeah, I, I would okay. say I think I have to think everything through, and then after I blow up mentally, and it's a whirlwind of emotion, both spiritually. And physically, Based on all of uh, the things that we have had to discuss and overcome, and just even like personal life events that we've all just you know been there for each other on, I think you are the most emotional upfront. Yeah. It, it definitely takes a lot of like talking crabby off the ledge of like hey like no like you're fine like we get it this is like this is totally like an emotional like you you should be like you're human um but the the logical problem solving comes after which i to a degree can follow though it depends on what the situation is if it's some small itty bitty nonsense that's just like an argument like oh i'm i'm full-fledged through the roof anger like f you f you you're cool goodbye if it's something major as far as like you know business business <laughs> handling or, or things like that like i'll handle the business first and appear calm at the surface freak out internally the entire time and then let the emotions out you know, we, we make no mistake honestly we i mean we, we yeah handle, we handle our stuff and we're, we're very professional and and, and everything but behind the scenes i mean yeah we we all deal with it a little bit. you're quite honestly i'm gonna say it's you it's because, because you're always playing you. devil's advocate and it's because i'm not paying attention <laughs> <laughs> you know what bliss there it is uh, but, there no, is bliss. but with all the personalities they blend they, they bounce well off of each other to make at the end of the day there you know there, there's no need for us to be anxious or or manic or whatnot because we still yeah you know, we get it done we do but I feel like there's two, there's at least, there's at least a half of this band, which is you and me, that feed off of each other's emotions. So like if he, that, that's the biggest thing. If he starts with emotion, I'm like right back with emotion instead yeah, of just being like, like, wait. We, we tend to, we tend to. We, we, we do clash sometimes. Oh, that's where Crab, I come in. Okay. Cra Crabby and I do clash <laughs> sometimes because he'll, he'll initially react with emotion and i should know that by now after what four years at this point okay. i should know yeah it's been a while. i should know that by now but my dumb ass is like no emotion right back f you too homie and then like we sit and we think about it we're like okay uh, wait a minute all, like <laughs> yeah we all have a drink we play a couple of songs we you know bullshit, call each other a couple of names make fun of each other and it's over it's always solved in the end. I, I think I think uh, anyone who who is now or or has been part of a, a professional project, working project, no understands what I'm what I'm trying to say. It, it like this, this is a marriage, mm -hmm. you know, and um, you're very married to two, three, four, five other people, and you know, and in order to to do things. You know just through proper channels and stuff it takes things like you know it can take things like money it takes things like contracts it takes no. a lot of time and patience and quite an investment and, and all that stuff is not easy and on top of that you're trying to you know you're, you're trying to create beautiful music and, and you have something to say and so you know it's that's a so, great point it really it yeah. really is like a marriage and a relationship because especially when you have the songwriters in the group like you take yourself to very vulnerable places to create a good product so i mean you these, these two have definitely seen in some of the decisions that were made in this band um and in songs that were written like they have definitely seen me uh they have both picked me up off the floor before um so you know you get into yeah it is a marriage because there's good bad ugly but then there's also you know some crazy awesome moments where you complete an album and you toss it on Spotify and we have a, a video of us popping champagne because we released our first album. So it really is it's a really good way to put it. it really is marriage. When you can get on stage and see the fruits of all that and, and, and people, people or just put it on on your car and like any yeah, given Tuesday, yeah. like, Hey, I did this. Like it's wild. Yeah, she's stuck in my car and won't come out. I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a song that you 
You're just tired of playing. I know Sweeze has like 10. <laughs> no comment. No, well, I mean, they're on a rotation anyway, but the one, yeah. the one I didn't like was because of, um, you know, that, that other guy from New York. I was like, that song is garbage. Like, <laughs> was it a released one? No, no, it was um, not. Oh, okay. It was not, thankfully. So we actually had, um, b before we took our hiatus uh, at the end of 2019, we actually had like half a new album written. Uh, we played okay. a couple of those new songs at our last show. Um, but then things just, the, uh, the, the path just changed. And the, the people who wanted to take the path obviously are here. And those who didn't, didn't. And at, at this point in the game, there were no hard feelings. It was a really tense situation when it all went down. Um, but this point, I mean, it's all been, you know, well wishes have been said, you know, checked up on each other. You know, everything's hunky dory with the former mem members at this point. Oh, <clears throat> oh, you were talking about somebody else. Never mind. Sorry. Okay, wait, no, hold on. No, hold on. We're going to change course here. Let's, let's I, I thought, yeah, I thought there was some animosity coming towards some of the older band members, no, no, and no, that's no, no, completely no. not true. No. So I don't have to cover any tracks here. We still love them. We're still friends hmm. with them. I still check up with them. We're good. There's nothing there. You were talking about, uh, you were talking about my ex-boyfriend, weren't you? It was, yeah, it was just remedial. <laughs> it was, I, 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 loved it. I loved that she wanted to try to, to write him a love song. And I, 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 better, oh, better, than, better than what I would have made by any stretch. <laughs> Next time you want to throw me under the bus, just honk the horn first. You're a CDL driver now. Honk, honk. No, it was, it was, it's a pretty song. It was just so repetitive. It was very few chords. And I was like, what are we doing? Okay. No. Okay. We're going to talk about this song. We never released it. Okay. We recorded it. We tracked it. Everything. Had it mixed, mastered. Like, it was part of the Sorry. album to come out. <clears throat> the ending was good. Remember? We yeah, never got yeah, The yeah. ending was, like, the best part of the song. But. I don't Thank you again. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So, so yeah, this song you know. was like we oh, we yeah. had this incredible yeah. ending, but like there was there was no way to get there. Um, so we finally got there, but it was so rudimentary in the beginning, and it reminded me of that cover that Pearl Jam did. Oh, where, where, yes. oh, where can my baby yeah, be? Yeah, that, that one. one. It literally okay. just like that. Um. And it was written about an ex-boyfriend of mine. And Sweez could not just keep in. He could not contain I, how much he hated the song. Because I he's like, I play, purpose. he's like, I play the same note the entire song. I no. hate this song. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this song. I hate this song. I hate this song. And then That's the only reason. Sure, sure enough, that obviously um, didn't that that went down like a dumpster fire. I mean, as most of my former relationships did, just because of who I am as a person, there's no way around find, it. <laughs> find you again is if 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 we keep this thing rolling for years to come. Find you again is going to be like that great lost track or something. No, it will not. <laughs> the, well, the ending might get the secretly ending, released yes, somewhere. But then somewhere movie, else. But... The ending of this song is epic. Yeah, uh, the ending was, was epic. It was. No, the, no, I just, I say it because the, the, <laughs> the drum part that I put to it, it, it's, I mean, that wasn't exactly, uh, you know, 120 BPM, you know, Megadeth stuff, but that was pretty. I'm surprised. It means 65 BPM. Yeah, it's, I mean, I was falling asleep to it. I was, I was there for that ending, man. <laughs> it's okay. All right. <laughs> Well, there goes the C. Okay, so I'm definitely not the calmest because I just jumped right to a conclusion there. Somebody should have given me a long dive score for that one. I, I didn't know what song you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I didn't either. <clears throat> I didn't know about a song. I thought we were talking about a person. My bad. I should have been more uh, clear and concise. There you go. Yeah. Fix that communication in this marriage. All right, I'll flip it around. You can ask me any questions now. Ooh, what is your favorite thing about being at a live show it's actually my happy place like there could be thousands of people around me and it wouldn't matter like it's just anything could be going around around me but i'm focused on the stage I like, like it, it, it's very it's soothing to me like it's just 
I know I'm not on stage, but I'm just saying just to people watch and the concert in general, like see, you know, everybody does different things at concerts. Yeah. You know, like the, the drunk, the, you know, you'll have the drunk people, you'll have the high people, and then you'll just have people that just, just an awe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's like a church. It's just it's like a it's. Uh, I, I hate to compare it to yeah. organized religion, but like it is, it is like a religion. It's a spiritual. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, spiritual. It's an experience. How long it take you to grow that beard? How I'm long gonna, is it? How long is it? I haven't. Yeah, measured. You, you cut off because you have the the name in front of you. Oh, oh wow. no. okay. <clears throat> It's not that big. Into the black shirt. Yeah, it looks good. Thank you. Do you, uh, do you. You didn't answer how long it took. Oh, <laughs> A couple years. I, I, I'm going to say three, four years. Okay. I'd love to do that, but for some reason it just doesn't grow in right here. It's the <laughs> damnedest thing. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, sing or play an instrument yourself? Mediocre acoustic. Like I'm not good. Like I, I mess around, but I don't really play. I'm more behind cameras and photography. Cool. So what got you into, what sparked your interest with um, photography? Was it photo first and then video or the other way around or just something else entirely? Just totally another page. Um, I just picked up photography recently. I just started, what do you call it? I always took pictures at shows and now I realize I've gotten better at it. So I do landscape and everything else. Awesome. That was a, that was a big interest for me all through high school. I took, um, through high school and college, I took photography. I always wished I would have learned more videography, but photography was cool because once you learned to like master some of the skills and like capture what you were actually seeing so you can yeah. share that moment like i could i could see like the, the passion like it, it grows more yeah mad, mad respect to, to to what you do there and all the you know professional photographers out there that can get those kind of action shots like mm-hmm. that I, i've only seen myself a little bit of behind the scenes kind of what goes into what you're trying to do settings on the camera and stuff and, and oh my oh my god i, I had no idea so that's that's an awesome uh, awesome thing you can do there and and honestly majority of the time it's just a cell phone really yeah i mean most all the new phones that are out are wild well most of the shows that i cover you can't bring in anything I can't bring anything with a removable lens so all cam- almost all cameras today have a disposable. I mean, move the lens. So you can't bring in a GoPro. You can't bring in anything except for your cell phone. Yep, that's wild. But I mean, look at the the Samsung S twenty one. They had an entire uh, photography show on Hulu called Exposure, and the photos were taken entirely with camera. Like the technology on our cell phones is like incredible now of what you can capture. And all the editing that you can do on your phone as oh well. My God. It's amazing. So when I was in high school, like my junior and senior year, so we're talking 2007, 2008, uh, I was still on Adobe Photoshop, like CS, CS2 at that point. But digital photography like was just getting really big. So yeah. like I was learning how to edit photos and all of these things for publication. I did an internship with a company that retouched photos for magazines. And just seeing how all of that technology is now in your freaking pocket. Only what? Not even like 15 years later, 14, 15 years later. Like it's what? (laughs) If you would have told me that when I was in high school, that like, oh, you could do this on your phone in 10 years. I'd have been like, yeah, okay. Well, they're, they're still teaching black room. Thank God, because that is a completely different form of art. I have coworkers that are in photography classes and they still have to go in the black room. Good. I, Good. I thought when they told me that, I was like, what? Like, I don't remember being in the black room 
that was my favorite form of photography, honestly. I felt a little bit more accomplished because it was so easy to screw up from the moment you completed taking your picture to actually developing your film to getting the picture printed. Like there were so many moments for you to screw up. So the sense yeah. of pride was 10 times greater when you finally got that print on that piece of paper. So I'm happy that it's still being taught because like it's it's something that's obviously considered obsolete now, but the fact that it's still an art, like that to me is really cool as somebody who loved it so long ago. So do you do you feel something is 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 lost with the whole thing of, of just snapping a picture with your yes with your cell phone as compared yeah. to as compared to what you're actually developing film like you're talking about? Me personally, okay. yes, I do. Um, being that my first experience ever with creating was with film photography, I actually left college for, I had gone to school for um, art and it was more, it was more fine arts. But while I was in the program after my first year, they shifted more towards digital arts. And that's why I left. I didn't feel the same sense of pride and satisfaction over digital art as I did um fine i i still call it fine arts even though digital arts actually falls under fine arts now um i just didn't feel the same sense of satisfaction or completion but now fast forward to where we are seeing some of the works of digital art that it's literally your your stylus has just replaced a pencil because of the way technology has grown my feelings have definitely changed a little bit but back at that point, when I had the decision to make, I, I felt very different about it. I didn't feel that it was the same. <clears throat> so with that said, with what do you call it? Um, how do you feel about not really having CDs out anymore? Because the that because was... because yeah. the art the art on it was is amazing. That actually was a, a pretty heated topic of discussion when we released the self-titled music. I personally feel like, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm not going to give feed anybody nonsense like that. The song, like the, the release of our music did not do well because it only went out digitally. Yeah, we um, it was a pretty heated topic of discussion regarding printing CDs. And I think majority of us kind of wanted to. Um, but our former members just kind of pushed at the sense that, you know, nobody buys CDs anymore. We didn't have um, a particular artist at the time to do some like great artwork. So if we printed CDs, it was just going to be all black with the old logo. Okay. Um, so there were just a lot of like, there were a lot of things that we considered and we looked at the cost <clears throat> of it um, compared to, you know, how many shows we had, had booked and what we were going to play. Like we ultimately wanted to print them. Um, we didn't, we, we just allowed the uh, the other voice of reason to get into our heads and we didn't make the decision that we wanted to. I still think there is a nostalgic feeling about printing them and having them available at your shows because there are still fans out there like me that want to hold it, that want to look at the artwork, that want to read the lyrics as they listen to a song they've heard for only the second time because the first time they heard it was live. Slide your ticket stub inside the. That, yeah, yeah. You, you either or I mean um, you can't you, you can't particularly see in our basement now, but like in our music room we have album art, we have some CDs from former bands that you know we were all in. They're they're plastered all over the walls. So if we continue to move everything digitally, like we won't have this, we won't have this kind of stuff. So not printing, man, I, I, I still think that they should be printed. I still think they should be had. I think. Even I, just I think limited, even just limited yeah. editions. I mean, you see people are doing limited edition vinyl, you know, they're doing. Yeah. Like prints and stuff like that like <laughs> a cd is more practical because most cars even Strap created now still have a cd slot or you know something yeah. but 
I, I just, it's, I don't know. I mean, I guess we can ask, you know, uh, so, the cassette yeah. tapes, you know, like. Oh, go back to the A-tracks. Those were great. Huh? Uh, it's, yeah. it's almost like yeah. everything has washed out at some point, but I think the difference from the CD to streaming is when you lost the A-track, when you lost the cassette, you still had something to hold. Like now yeah. we've gone into that, that time period where there's, there's nothing to hold anymore. Yeah, how do you make mixtapes? That is, man? that like, is weird. Hilarious. Well, speaking of that, I made a thing on Spotify of everybody that I've interviewed so far. I added you guys on this morning. Heck yeah, thank, thank you so much. So much. Yeah. We thank appreciate you. that. That's so awesome. I will send you the link to that. You'll you'll see people you know, and awesome. I'm just I'm trying really to shine. It this morning. I, I'm trying to sh uh, show more weight on people that are not known yet. Awesome. Thank you so thank much. You. We really appreciate yeah. that. And we do have, like, we've been working really hard on rebranding. So we have 2022 is going to be all new music coming out like the entire year. We, uh, we're still working behind the scenes on, like, a bunch of artwork and new logo and merch and new members and all that fun stuff. But um, no, make, uh, make damn sure our silence is not because we've been sitting on our asses eating bonbons. We've, uh, we've been rebranding entirely. Yeah. And, uh, so I think much. we got nothing but bops coming. Yeah, it's really hard <laughs> to stop this freight train, man. Train's so, got no brakes. So, so much going on in the background and, and, yeah. and going back to the CDs real quick. I, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm an old dog learning new tricks mm -hmm. in, in this whole thing these days. Um, but yeah, I was definitely of the the thoughts of um, of, of printing CDs and such. Uh, I I loved it, like Pat was saying. I, I loved it with cassette tapes or with CDs. I bought pull those inserts out, read the lyrics, read the credits, and see the artwork and everything. Plus, going to a show, I just I loved having something tangible in my hand that, mm. that I could take away. About the only thing that stayed the same is is having your T-shirts, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> Grab a T-shirt on your way, yeah. And all that. So, yeah. all all this digital media and stuff. Well, with our new artwork and everything, it, it's all being digitally done. I'm just not, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> it's yeah. There's 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 been a, a huge learning curve. Like, I find it to be huge, which is is funny because I'm 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 I'm, I'm a millennial. Um, these guys aren't too much older, but they're, they're still looking at me like, you think it's bad? Like we had our amps and a microphone and that's how we did it. Like, what is this online digital bullshit? What do you mean? You don't need to <laughs> drums in the studio. What, what do you mean? I don't need to bring my kit. What is this? Like, and we, you know, we, we sent, we sent Krabby a, a demo. Um, it was the first time I had ever like actually learned like how to program drums on the computer. And he's like, who's playing drums? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, 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 so who's playing that? He's like, who the hell's playing that? I'm like, the computer? They, they said the computer. It's a drum Mr. machine. Mr. MacBook. We, 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 we programmed that in there. And I, I said, get out. <laughs> he's like, what the hell? He's like, is this how you tell me? <laughs> so things are definitely weird. Like just, just kind of touch it on all of that. Like CDs and just the way it's all changed. Like even writing for us is a very, very different process than it used to be. So there's, I, sometimes, yeah. sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I'm like, you know what, we just need to call an old school, like everybody bring your instruments, no computer, bring a 40, let's get mad. Let's write about something. And then there are other times where the, the speed and the ease of use of just typing out a quick, you know, I got something, in my, head. Or I got something yeah. in my head, let me get it out. Like, Having having the ability to write both ways is is awesome, but at the same time, like a world of knowledge creates that much more frustration. The the, the, the technology is definitely advancing and is getting better. However, that doesn't necessarily mean I think I think that the music gets better. You still have to to create yeah. and and you know and, and and feed off that from within within your your own emotions and everything and it's it's just a new way to to do something old and and sacred and in many ways i i do find it uh it it, it is very efficient it can be very efficient um but i ain't gonna lie with uh you know i, I do miss sometimes yeah, sometimes you gotta sit or, here and just and, wail it and, out and hit you know get the feel of the heads and everything or or being in the studio all of us being in the studio and and recording it uh analog and digitally like that that's what i'm used to but that's not 
necessarily the case anymore these days. Not to give out too much, you know. No, no, like it's it's just the no, right it's now. just it's it's the way everything's <laughs> gone these days. I mean, like there there are bands out there that don't have members, that don't have drummers don't have bassists, but they're still playing shows because you can run tracks now because well, all of that stuff yeah. can be done. You know, you, you have, I think the cool thing about the digital age, as much as it's moved from the, the, the sweetness and passion of playing the instrument is that somebody who can't play that instrument, like me, for instance, I can't play the drums to save my life. The strings on a bass always tore up my tiny little fingers. And I can't play guitar anymore after my car accident and the nerve damage in my hand. So for me to be able to sit here and still tap shit out on a keyboard, I can now write an entire song when I have a, a thought in my head because the digital world makes that possible for me. Whereas before I would be locked in my head, hoping somebody could help me get it out because I would need somebody to play drums. Okay. I would need somebody mm -hmm. to play bass. Whereas I can kind of type something out, send it to y'all, and you could be like, hey, this is great, or no, this is trash, let's try this. <laughs> I, I remember running a Casio keyboard, stupid synth beats through a four track back in the 90s to record yeah. stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's nice nowadays, it is. And you can have band members in different states too, and yeah. rehearse that way. So that, that was a wild concept for me. I, I had a band on the other night, they still have not met each other. They've been, they've been sending tracks back and forth. Cool. It's wild, dude. Wow. Absolutely wild. And like still like good for them because the digital age has made that all possible. Yeah. That's not something that you would have seen 80s or 90s. Oh hell no. No way. Just give me one second, guys. Oh, you're good. I'm, I'm what trying to get to Miss Mindy. I'm trying to get her in right now. Heck yeah. She couldn't have, uh, she was having a problem with Wi Fi, so I'm trying to get her in. Oh no. Like a patch, the one thing I can also say about the digital age is like the whole, and everything's kind of reversed now. I, I've said this to you all a lot is back in the day, in order to get exposure, you needed to go out, you needed to play shows, you needed to put yourself out there, hand out flyers, wallpaper something. Now it's your social media stats. Correct. <laughs> You're being because of how well you do on social media is the shows that you play, you know, it's it's quite the yeah. exact opposite. They used to have a they used to have a they used to have a, they used to have a book so you uh telling you how to promote yourself and everything back in the day before computers and Yeah. Dude, like none of it's none of it's the same. Like if you read that book, like you are no longer active in the music industry no. anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it was yes. Take your CD. Take demos, your CDs and like go to, go to a show and, go go to a show, stand outside yeah. and pass it out to get everybody the, who is walking the out. City paper to find out what hand out are free tickets. Yeah, dude. Oh, Sending everything in your press kit, like yeah. a, a physical, physical. Oh wait a minute! Hey, we we got somebody for you, and I and I have a fan question for you. Hey, heck yeah! Ah, baby girl, hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. What's going and on? I'm, and I love you. I love you. You're allowed to be late. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You know, you know, work, the usual, normal everyday life of being a rock star, I suppose. <laughs> I've had my ass kicked and handed to me twice over the last two weeks at work. So this is a nice reprieve to get back into band space where I feel free. Well, she froze. Totally understandable. Since I have you both in the room, I know you have matching tattoos. How'd that happen? <laughs> so do. <laughs> On the best finger possible. <laughs> um, yes. So it was actually um, supposed to be between uh, Mindy and Brianna. Brianna is an incredible fan across this scene who is definitely part of both the Dying Oath and the Forever Mayfall family. Um, she's the leader of our street team, the Fallen. She's always in our group um, prompting questions and, and getting, getting everybody alive. Um, 
she had been on stage with Mindy and Dying Oath a couple of times, um, or was it once or twice, a couple of times, um, just, just singing some songs with them. And she had just mentioned wanting to get her first tattoo. She had never had it before. And they had planned, both Mindy and Brianna, to, to go and get this done at some point. Um, and Brianna was, was messaging me and talking about her tattoo, and she showed me what it was. And I, I looked at it. I was like, you know, like, that's really cute. Like, it's kind of sticking with me because I grew up on Long Island. So an anchor to me, like, it was, it just had like a home, like a home, homebound kind of meaning. Um, and I messaged Brianna. I'm like, would you care if I got this with you? And she was like, well, me and Mindy are getting it matching anyway. So as long as you don't mind matching me and Mindy. And I was like, Mindy's like my favorite. <laughs> being on this planet i'm like so of course yeah <laughs> so we we went and had a day out of it and it was fun so mindy uh, me and brianna all have matching tattoos we do and they're right here right here right there <laughs> it's actually really funny that this question get asked, gets asked today. I had a client in a signing notice it on my finger today, and she was like, "Man, you're brave." And I was like, "Oh, I was very vocal about this tattoo." <laughs> yeah, we we're like, "Oh, this isn't going to be so bad," and they were like, "Oh, okay, okay, well." Um, <laughs> Literally, things a little. And it's it's funny because Brianna, like her first tattoo, like she didn't make a peep. Like she just no. sat there and Mindy and I looked at each other and we were like, oh, sh like <laughs> we've got a boss on our hands. She made not a sound. She sat there the whole time. I'm like, okay, it's her first tattoo. It cannot be that bad if she didn't make a peep. Well, then Mindy went and she's like, yep, yeah, can't say I'm a fan. Like, this is not mm -hmm. great. And then you, I go in with my sailor mouth, like, F you, F this, why did we do this, F that, F the tattoo artist. Like, meanwhile, I paid to have him do this to me. Like, why am I cursing him out? <laughs> Good times. <laughs> That's accurate. That's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I think the healing was more annoying, though. I could not agree more. It was so itchy. Yes. More so than any other tattoo I've ever had. I agree. I think it's just you use your hands so much that, you know, you can't not think about it. <laughs> yeah, well, you're also staring at it all day. Like, that should be itchy. Oh, now it's itchy. <laughs> so since you came in, do you have any questions? Um, Interrogate me, baby. <laughs> I was going to say, like, <laughs> we talk so much that it's really hard to... Uh, to find something I probably haven't already fangirled and asked already. Um, what is your writing process? I think that's one thing that I haven't asked you actually. So it's actually really funny because right before um, right before you jumped in, we were, we were talking about how it's actually changed over the last couple of years um, and how the digital age has like, it's made it easier, but it's also kind of like taken a little bit of the, um, like rawness out of it. Um, it used to be where we would all like every Friday, no matter what, like clockwork, Friday, 630, we all got into this room. Um, we picked up our instruments, picked up a case of beer, whatever it was we were drinking for the night, um, got into our fields and jammed out. And if we liked it, we developed it. Um, we would record it on our phones. I would listen over and over, sit up in my bedroom late at night, um, see what it instilled in me, come up with some lyrics, hash it out at the next practice, and we would have a song in probably a week or two. Now, with the digital age and the writing changing, um, I finally just got myself an 88 key um, Arturia key lab. So now I can lay down everything myself without having to rely on anybody. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all become digital. So instead of, you know, 30 second snippets of somebody doing something in the same room, it's usually me or a, a producer we're working with, another another um, songwriter. I know you've worked with William. We, we're actively always talking to William Baker. Shout out to that homie because he's awesome. Um, always tossing ideas off of him, too. Um, but yeah, it's all digital now. So it's like a 30 second clip of either, you know, me knocking something out a singing riff i hit in my head um i will say i definitely feel a little bit less inspired than i used to feel right now um but that's the universe 
you know, everybody goes through their moments. Things will change. We still collaborate, obviously. And we still collaborate. Yeah, outside, everybody gets but, everybody gets sent yeah. something, but it's not um, it's not created. The idea is not created the same way anymore. Where it's the four of us jamming over something in the same room. Um, it, it's changed to really just kind of tidbits that either I come up with or another songwriter comes up with and it's kind of passed around. So it's, it's, it's listened to and it's heard. It's, it's not 100% felt. Um, we have all been talking about doing the old school at least once a month, like just get into the same room together and do it the old school way, jam it out. Um, I think us old dogs, are not adapting 100% too well to the digital age. We like the technology, it's really cool, but the writing process I feel might suffer, might be suffering a little bit because we're not doing it the same way. Yeah, I mean, because we were working on, well, not much to their chagrin, they didn't really want to do this, but I was working on a 12 act musical of Richard Nixon going back in time to try to stop the Watergate investigation. It was, Shut it was, up. It was going to be solid gold, it was going to go platinum, and they, they ruined it. The digital age and these two right here. <laughs> I take full responsibility because I feel like that was a superhero act of saving the world. <laughs> that. If it only if it inspired one person, if it inspired one person. <laughs> Using my words against me now. That's not to say we, we're not excited about and we're not digging what what we have come up with oh no mindy's mindy's heard the box okay all right, all right. So, mindy's yeah, heard the box no, she knows what's in store we're, we're fine and, <laughs> and, and with this whole rebranding with the like like box was saying with the with the logo and the sound and just just the, the the look of everything i mean for me on the on the drums it's you know it's different technique it's a different sound it, the, the different music calls for different things and i i welcome a challenge all the time <laughs> but uh um, it's, uh, I mean, I, I, I do like it. I am enjoying it. I am enjoying it. And, uh, I think it's sounding really good. I think it's, you know, pretty catchy and, um, I don't know. He's being well, modest. Yeah, he's being, he's being he's modest. Cause I will say if, uh, if there is anybody that can screw a drummer, it is somebody who is not a drummer writing a drum track. <laughs> he was able to play anything the computer replicate or did. He was able to replicate whatever the computer put down and then yeah. some. Uh, so don't, yeah, yeah, you're good, man. You're very good. I, I appreciate it. I, I did have input as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I mean, I, I guess, things, you know, I guess yeah. we've essentially let out of the bag that on, on some of our new stuff, Travi did not in fact record the drums on it, but it's become common practice um yeah. nowadays and some of the active, yeah. active rock scene that the drums are just programmed um some of it you can tell some of it um it doesn't doesn't really lay in that pocket correctly um some of it is too programmed out of pocket you can tell and some of it's done just perfectly um <laughs> yeah we, we, they're still yeah. present in the studio when possible i mean we've worked with um a couple of different producers on a lot of the newer stuff um we we didn't stay in one spot we wanted to explore being that we're rebranding um so you know i i went and i worked um i, I we, we worked with kyle odell we worked with josh landry we worked with uh um, west louderback from lowborn we've worked with a lot of different people throughout this year um, they, they have had the pleasure of, of being in the room um, at certain times, depending on which producer we're working with and the location, and how we're working with them. Um, so it's not to say that they're excluded from the process in any way. They're just not physically playing. So, you know, if, if, if Wes went and typed out this crazy ass thing, he could be like, yeah, no, I can't actually play that. Like drums don't do that. <laughs> yeah, drums, um, yeah. So it's uh, you know, like she was saying, we were touching on this just before you jumped in, Mindy. Um, old dog, new tricks here. This this is not in the studio laying down some scratch stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, I just get input saying like, oh yeah, I think this will work. That'll work. Let's let's change this, move that, you know, sort of thing. Um, I don't think it's any secret these days with the with the technology like that, but. Um, but definitely a different process. I'm, I'm I'm getting used to. I thought I was fired when I, when I, heard, when I heard the first uh, the first new track. I said, "Who's who, who who's doing the drums on that?" I'm working on my chops, man. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, "No, we programmed it. It's a computer." I I, I was like, "Get out!" <laughs> <laughs> no, no drum machine. <laughs> but uh, it's it's fun times though. 
how about you guys and Diane Oath? Are you still are you using using the same processes or yeah. are you doing it sit in a room style? Um, it's a little bit of everything, honestly. Like, um sometimes it's it's the old school, you know, we'll just be at practice and they'll start jamming something out and we kinda like it and like you said, you know, we'll just kinda carry it out and perfect the parts that we don't like later on and whatever. And then sometimes, you know, Josh will be at his house and he's got everything that he can record everything to and he'll have an idea and be like, OK, this is kind of what I hear. And then, you know, we'll bring it into the studio at practice. And of course, our drummer will be like, I hate all of that, you know, and then he'll write his own parts. And then it's just a little bit of everything. It kind of depends on who starts writing the song. Sometimes I'll write lyrics and it'll inspire them to do guitars. Most of the time it's Josh writing tons and tons and tons of guitar riffs. He writes like 200 a week, I swear. Wow. And then we'll just, you know, take the ones that we like and put parts together. And it's, you know, the process it's, it's long. It's a long yep. process. Copy, paste, cut and paste, delete yeah. entirely. <laughs> yeah. Can you read, uh, can you read, uh, somewhere? Um, now it's a blank. The uh, music. Can you read music? Yeah. Can't think of a technical term right now. <laughs> yes. Um, so <laughs> I can read. I can read a treble clef, no problem. Um, I can read a bass clef, but I am. So good boys do fine always. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm. I'm slower. Um, that was actually one of the things that um slowed me down playing piano because all through elementary school music, which is where I got like my first taste of like learning music. Um, they really push the treble clef on you and they teach it to you that it becomes almost a second language. I didn't learn the bass clef until I decided that I wanted to play piano. So I was like 90% proficient in reading treble clef as if it were English and my right hand could get through a piece in perfect time and my left hand would still be like sitting there trying to be like good boys do but like <laughs> trying to figure it out because I, I was never taught as as much as i was taught the travel club um so if i could change something i would say that public school like music should teach you both at the same time so that anybody who decides to go and play piano like you don't suffer <laughs> what i did um, i got by for a really long time playing the guitar chords that are written atop for my left hand instead of actually playing what was written. Um, but after much practice, I can actually read sheet music. Um, I did something in high school called NISMA. So I went to um, public school in New York. We had the New York School Music Association. Okay. Once you reach uh, third or fourth grade, you, I think it's fourth grade, um, you can sign up to sing in front of a judge um, you go, you get bussed off, you get a, a whole audition time. There's a whole list of approved songs that you can sing um, based on whatever level it is. You sing the song in front of a judge and then they make you sight read. So they hand you like a little staff. It's on the treble club, has a bunch of notes and using the do, re, mi, fa, you know, scale syllables, you have to sight read what is in front of you. They'll go to the piano, hit a note and you have to do the whole do re mi with in whatever sequence the notes are listed um i did that for quite a few years uh, i still have all my scoring sheets um they they grade you on pitch um, diction intonation facial expression sound quality performance like they, they cite really they grade you on everything um, and it, it ranged from like satisfactory to outstanding were the, the different levels. It was a, a 28 point scale. Um, wow. so I did that for, I did that for four years. Um, and it's like, it's freaking nerve wracking. Cause you're like eight, <laughs> you walk into a room, you sing this song, you do this sight reading. And like the judge just looks at you and they're like, okay, thank you. And you're like, and then you just leave. But then you get this like amazing score on a sheet of paper three weeks later and you're like, but why were they so mean about it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why like, I don't have stage fright because like I did that as a child. So. <laughs> so do you play any other instruments or just piano? I used to play guitar. Um, I was never um, 
never like super solo guitar player good um i was good enough to be able to play some of our own songs like blood in my mouth and like 10 30. but in 2019 in august i got into a car accident i got rear-ended and i have nerve damage in my neck that runs through my my left arm so my pinky and my ring finger on my left hand do not move the same way that the rest of my hand does so i cannot play guitar anymore i tried learning lefty and it's just like my brain just doesn't want to do it (laughs) do you guys play anything else harmonica yeah i'm really good there i'm sorry i asked (laughs) (laughs) i'll bring it next time you'll say no because i'm not going to play piano man for a song named (laughs) and the harmonica Uh, doesn't shut the fuck up being um being a, a straight up band nerd through my whole public school career, like I mentioned, uh, um, in addition in addition to all the all the drumline stuff, um, during concert seasons, I picked up some other instruments. I, I did some time on contrabass clarinet, tenor saxophone, soprano saxophone, the sousaphone. One short time during marching. Who are you? And bagpipes. <laughs> I knew the bagpipes. Yeah. Got that, that, that Halloween thing, the the, the like that thing. What about you, like, Mindy? Do you play anything else? Um, I play guitar. Um, like you said, good enough. I'm not phenomenal at it. I can play and sing enough to, you know, I I can do rhythm, so to speak. Right, um, yeah. but I actually was a bass player for ten years before I was a vocalist. So holy crap, really? Yes, that's how I started out. I did backup vocals, but uh. I was the bass player in my first band. That's wild. That is awesome. I did not know that. I also played clarinet. <laughs> I played the viola in third grade, but I started and ended in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. I started doing uh, piano lessons, but I never really made it that far. I just I was at a point in my life where I, I just didn't have the attention span to actually sit down and learn. I learned like two or three songs, and I was like, eh. Oh, it's not for me, so. I feel that. I tried to do the same with drums, and, like, I just didn't have the time to dedicate to it. I I want to play drums. I'm just terrible at it. Like, my hands and feet want to do the same thing, and sometimes they're not supposed to, so it's like this whole <laughs> ordeal. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's, I tell you, it's it, it's just practice. You can do it. Jill, you can do it. It's just just a lot of practice. Uh, you ladies could, could kill it. I I mess up all the time. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, that is a, that that's an exciting barrier though. When you when you start getting a, a couple limbs doing two different things or whatever, and um, yeah. I'm just the vocalist. I do the easy stuff. I don't. Yeah. No, I, kinda, no, no, no. I kind of agree with just doing the vocal thing. Singing in key is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely not, especially when you're up in like octave five and six. So like my goal is to hit a C7 and then I'll retire because I'm <laughs> I'm currently at an F6 as my highest note. So if I can make it to a C7, like I'll never open my mouth again. Like- <laughs> okay, we're not going to let you retire, but I do want to yeah. see this. So keep practicing. <laughs> I want you to call me and be like, listen. <laughs> Just call me. Like- <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your eardrum? Well, you know. Well, I got the strange phone call. <laughs> it happens. See, that's why I three things. Like, you know, I just I just get to yell at things all day. It's, it's awesome. See, but you did a cover that had me like jaw on the floor because I didn't know you could sing that high. Aw, thanks, love. Um, yeah, I actually started out singing opera. Really? Yeah, I was classically trained. Um, I used to spend every day after school while everybody was doing cool stuff and uh, taking opera lessons. That's wild. Nice. Opera now center. I just yell at things. So I'm sure my teacher, wherever she is, is probably like, you wasted all of that to yell at things. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now I want to learn how to scream without screwing up my voice. So we'll um, we'll definitely have some weekends, some musician weekends in our future. 
help me buff out some of my claims. I'll help you yell at things and together we'll be unstoppable. Perfect. <laughs> oh, shut up. I do not. That'd be great though. It's, uh, it's, it's there. We're, we're hoping for a, a little collaboration there. Great. Something is brewing. <laughs> Something's definitely brewing. I can't wait for that. Us either. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. This has been a really good time. So thank you again for having us. No problem. Anytime. <laughs> Yeah, we Thanks definitely did it. Of course. Yeah, the, the world's been like, I don't know about everybody else, but like the world has definitely been in some weird, some planets in retrogate, Gatorade, some reverse cowgirl, <laughs> or other. It's just, I, I don't know if anything is where it's supposed to be. But the last two weeks have just, like, I just feel like I have been getting abused by the universe. So, and I know a couple of other friends in my circle have felt the yeah. same. It's just been rough. So this yeah. was a, a much needed good time. I agree. I miss you and your hugs. So I have to come see you soon. Me too. Come, come hang. Let's just sit in here and write some stupid stuff or cover things for all I care. Hey, that would be, that would be pretty awesome. We should definitely do a cover together at some point. Absolutely. We need to have a show together so this man can be in person. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, That's going to happen. Yeah. Probably by mid to end of next year. I think so for sure. We'll have I'm not I'm not pro I'm not promising anything, but I'm working on a, trying to do a benefit concert as soon as possible. That would be cool. We um we do not have our collective bearings together yet um with some of the new stuff for how we want to play it and new equipment that we're using um but i know i know for sure by uh by the middle of next year festival season we'll be ready to go freight train. yeah freight train for sure then i'm gonna be calling you so as soon as you guys are ready let me know because i'm putting you on the first show that i possibly can Nice. Oh, Thank I you. love Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Definitely yeah. happening. Yeah. Full speed at that one. If there's anything we can do for you all, I'll bring the 40s. Please. I'll bring them. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> well, we already <laughs> we already scared the crap out of them. They have so they have the same thing that we have. So we have the fallen. They have dying those family. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I try and stay apprised of what what goes on in there i try and share all their stuff that's really like we were just talking about that too like social media is like how you grow yourself now so like that's that's how you help your fellow bandmates you just share the crap out of what they're doing comment interact make sure their stuff stays relevant in the algorithms and be there for each other <laughs> that's actually how we became friends i yeah. think i might have messaged you and was like hey i love your work I want to help. I don't know how, but let me be your friend or something. I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> we, we had a bunch of mutual friends too. I, it was, it was, it was that's just how it just happened and how it grew. Like that's, that's how I met William too. There's a lot, a lot of these guys. Um, Will was actually our manager for a little bit. Get out, really? Yeah, when we first started out, um, like the first six or seven months that we were out he um was our manager he gave us great advice and helped us uh, build our page and whatnot and we wouldn't be where we are without will dude he's a super smart dude like he's just all around good person to know if you don't know him you need to like <laughs> i agree yeah I, 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 I really do appreciate him me too we actually, the song that you were talking about, um, he and I are going to be doing a video this month for it. I mentioned that. Really? That. So hopefully that turns out well. And Jilly Bean, if you want to come be in it, come be in it. <laughs> Yay! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a there's a lot of good people. There's a lot of good people in this scene. I mean, a lot of a lot of people like to talk smack, and there's a lot of 
animosity that goes around from genre to genre. But I, I think ultimately North Carolina, we have we have a really good scene. There's a big family um, family aspect for sure. I think Virginia is the same way, but I also think that Virginia and North Carolina have kind of become sister states at this point in the scene. You know, I think I'd there's agree. a lot of bridges between the two. So I'm really enjoying the fact that, you know, I can go to North Carolina or you can come to Virginia and they'll treat you just the same, you know? Agreed. Sure. 100%. So at this time, do you want to announce anything? Um, ooh, we have a whole timeline for announcing things things so uh, what i can announce is that everyone needs to stay tuned because 2022 is going to be the year of the new new there's a new logo there will be new members there will be new music there will be new everything it's an entirely new vibe um yeah, new music, new videos, new everything. Uh, just a whole new perspective, honestly. So um, the best thing I can say is right now, um, some of the bigger announcements that are still somewhat secrets are being made in our um, private group, The Fallen, uh, which I think I saw you request membership earlier, so I have to yeah. go through that. Um, that's where most of the conversation has started. That is direct access to all of the members of the band. That's we check that as regularly as we check like our regular social media. So like if you post in that group, like it comes directly to us as a notification that you posted there. Um, okay. It's as close to messaging us directly. Um, and then, yeah, all of the like new, like major announcements will start rolling out probably by like the middle end of uh, next month. So Keep your eyes posted on all of the socials. If you know somebody that should be following, make sure they get on the train and we'll, uh, we'll come out guns swinging next year at some point. Yeah, you know when bands say there's big things coming, we do have big things coming. Yeah, like, no, we actually have the big mm -hmm. things coming. Like, entirely rebranding big things, new music, like, slap you silly. It's been a long time coming. Freight train. Yeah. Mindy's heard it. Mindy's heard nice. pretty much all of it. So Mindy can tell you what you need to do. <laughs> Honestly, it is from a fan perspective. I think it's amazing from a vocalist musician perspective. I think it's brilliant. I really do think that this year is going to be your year. I really do. Thank you, babes. Thank you, Thank you so much. And of course, we are we are fans as well. Obviously, it's, yes. I would say all the exact same things about you all. I will say I saw that there's a new bassist on the horizon finally for Dying Oath. Yes, I'm gonna actually message you about that later. Um, yeah. I know the eyes yeah. need to be peeled for that announcement. Yes, we're actually announcing it Saturday. Like, yeah. I think we're going to blow people's minds when they figure out who it is. It's going to be crazy. Um, but, you know, we were kind of down there for a little bit because our last three shows got canceled. Um, so that was a hard hit. Uh, one of them could have really changed our lives, you know, for the next year. Um, but I think that everything happens for a reason. As everybody in a band knows, you know, things happen the way that they should in the time frame that they should. So, um, you know, we're just trying to regroup and we're in the studio right now, finishing up that full length. So yeah. by the time Can't we get stuff out, your I stuff will be out. Hopefully All we can. things will be out. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we can get on some of these festivals together and, and maybe get you guys on this way. Absolutely. We'd love that. Uh, 100%. Definitely bring the board. You have 40s. 40s for everybody, courtesy I'm of Sweet. I'm bringing 40s. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Only Cole 45, though. Oh! <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the band. 
some oldies, some uh, Hurricane. Yeah, I can, back in mind, it was uh, uh -huh. Indy 2020. Oh, and, and these days, I will say I am really... I don't want to puke through tomorrow, though. Really looking forward uh -huh. to like an actual group hug for the three of us, or the five of us, when we finally get to a show together. So just FYI, like... I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I'm I'm gonna be hugging you a lot sooner than that, but yeah, for well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> so Mandy, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask or No, I'm just I'm just ready to see them out on stage. That's all I want, all I need in my life right now. <laughs> I gotta get back in shape, homie. We shot Me that music. Too. I shot that. We shot that music video, and I was like, "Oh my god! Thank God, sets are only like forty-five minutes because four <laughs> hours of this nonsense. Like, I can't freaking breathe." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "I need to get home and just like start screaming into the microphone while doing like high knees and push-ups simultaneously, if that's even that. possible." I played through that thing like twelve. Oh my god! Yeah, this poor guy. Thing. He had to play yeah. every single shot because he was in every shot. So this man hmm. played through the same song for four and a half hours straight. Uh, he told me that he was in his bed later that night just going like this as he was sleeping. <laughs> no, I legit. <laughs> I don't know about you. Like, I don't know how y'all still do it. But like after four and a half hours of this music video, like jumping around, swinging my hair around, like there is so much hair. This is so heavy. Swinging it around, like I literally woke up Saturday morning and I was like, oh my God, I can't move. Like, <laughs> I'm getting older. <laughs> I feel that pain. I've, in my experience, I feel like after you've shot the music video for something, that's the song you end up liking the least because you've yeah. heard it a thousand so times when you wrote it, another thousand times when you shot the video, and then you get to go play it live for a whole year, and it's. <laughs> Dude, I think this song in particular, like, I'm I'm just going to let it out of the bag. Like, even though this is the first one we're coming out with, I think it's actually my least favorite of everything that we have prepared coming for the year. And I think my standpoint was, like, just get it out of the way, you know, because every, everything that I personally feel is better, like, why, why would I put that up first? Um, so having to go through all of these motions with the song that I'm like, it's good, meh. I like it. It's great. We did it. But it's not my 100% favorite to go through all of this and wake up that next day and just be like, I hurt for this. <laughs> <laughs> but then you look at yourself and you're like, I can't say that about my product because like it's it's still good. It's, it's, good. it's crazy. It's just, it, I feel like there are different things we got to tap into after the fact of writing this song that are just that much deeper. So. Um, well, you did it great job it, I, like if, if i was a fan i wouldn't know that you were sick of this song or whatever i mean you, well thank you, did you. A, a fantastic job i just threw a bunch of crap and you know so I don't know, I don't know if it'll make the video but, it, it but we we did we uh we made a little behind the scenes clip that we we might wind up sharing later on at some point we just we just have to check the social climate and if it's acceptable um but uh <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there was at one point like I, I think like we just we just told Krabby we're like just get angry and the end of the song has this just snare whale he just like whales on the snare it's like one two three four and he like well the <laughs> snare but then stands up and like chucks his drum throne like clear across the room <laughs> and we're like what what the hell like oh okay like he was feeling it so we get home and we just started playing with some of the behind the scenes footage and we matched up that footage of him throwing the drum throne to the law and order theme song oh no <laughs> and then, so, like you just see it it's like the law and order theme song it's him wailing it and throwing the drum throne and then like right behind it like executive producer dick wolf with the like boom boom <laughs> I have to see that. <laughs> we'll send it to you. Oh, that'd be freaking great. Oh my god. Yeah. I, I need this in my life. <laughs> we'll send it to you. We're not sure if we're going to post it because no, like, yeah. 
it could be deemed insensitive. Like we're not obviously not trying to be. Um, we we come from all different walks, and we have fans of all different walks. We don't want to offend anybody. Um, I, I I always I had always found it with music videos making them when you're in this controlled environment. I like I I find it difficult to to really emote and 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 project you know, the type of feeling that we want to, because, because I don't know, you know, Mindy, how, how, you know, directors you've worked with and everything, but everyone always tells me, it's like, okay, Adam, just, just 110%, 110%, you know, every, every cut, just under, yeah, we gave it. And I, yeah. And I really wanted to, and I really wanted to give it. I like the song. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I like it, but. Um, you didn't so sit locked in the studio writing it. But I just, I, so what I did is we finished, I think we finished Jill's, um, and if we do a, like a documentary on this, this will definitely be there, but just, <laughs> just real briefly, I think we finished Jill's couple takes alone that he wanted me in the background for, and then I knew it was my turn. So we, so we finished hers and I, I went to the direct, to the director and, and I said, Hey, look, let's, let's just, I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm out of breath. Let's go into it right now. And. I, I'll just because I, I think that helps give me my own and everything's like, okay, sure. Are, are you sure? Get us get some water. So so we did that and I just got into it. I think I broke a symbol a little bit more. And and uh and I don't know what came over me at the end, but I just that last one, two, three, four, I just stood up and my phone went <laughs> flying and I I I'm surprised it didn't break a stick, but I don't know how you didn't break your throat. <laughs> I think it went clear but across if, the if room. If you see the if you see the raw footage of that without the what you know what you did to it um you hear everybody in the background just go oh my god yeah what was that it's i'm surprised <laughs> you actually didn't break your snare head too because like the yeah. last four like your arms like we had this drummer audition for us before we found oh, crabby my that, ears still hurt oh. oh my god this this kid played like he, he wasn't like playing from his wrist like he was literally like think of like <clears throat> bam bam from the flintstones like bringing his entire arm and the weight of his arm down from his shoulders oh. and it was so loud like he was beating the snare drum like it owed him money so <laughs> Ryan, where's my money obviously he's not the drummer of forever may fall but like when Krabby hit those four notes on that video shoot like it reminded me of that kid because like he hit him so hard I'm like how did he not bust through his yeah. snare head <laughs> It was wild, man. There was a lot of emotion in that shoot, though. Yeah. Like, especially just because of the story it tells. Um, it, it was really funny because I, I play um, in the story shots. I play my older self. Um, so it's, it's pretty much a, a story of me overcoming um, some of the, the bad crutches and habits, mostly um, drinking to deal with my anxiety and depression. So I, I play my older self where I have my long curly um, purple hair. So I had to get a wig obviously to mimic my hair. And I just remember putting it on and like getting my makeup all done and like putting on the same clothes and like looking in the mirror and I'm like, wow, I look like uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> it was so profound, but not at the same time. So I was like, this is <laughs> awkward. But then it was also pretty cool to like be in this moment trying to portray myself two and a half years ago and just be like, wow, like I've actually come really far. So we're we're excited for that. Well, it's gonna be a theme for me, that kind of energy. I'm not gonna throw anything on stage, but Nah, <laughs> just, just just do it. Just throw it off. Freaking just do it. Just do it. Just, just throw the sticks, <laughs> throw the broken symbol. We'll have broken drum heads at the merch table. <laughs> just sign them you're fine exactly exactly somebody will buy it don't worry you know i'll i'll be custom tying cutting ripping t-shirts if anybody's interested i'll wear one don't worry i will custom tie one just for you i'll wear one don't <laughs> worry <laughs> yeah i want to thank you guys once again for coming through I'm going to end the chat right now and we still talk outside the uh, recording. Absolutely. We definitely want to thank you for having us. This is, like we said, just a really bright, happy moment to just kind of reflect on everything that we've done and are doing um, in, a, in a time where 
everything's chaotic for us right now. So we really appreciate yeah. this. Thank you. And thank you, Mindy, for stopping by too. Yes. Thank you, thank you guys.